In this tutorial, we're going to introduce the benefits of two WordPress plugins that work really well together, Beaver Builder and Microthema. We'll walk through the design process step by step, starting from a blank page, adding content with Beaver Builder, and then styling the content into a real world landing page using Microthema, a page that will look just as good on mobile thanks to the responsive features of both plugins. So by the end of this video, you should know if either plugin is suitable for your needs and a bit about how to use them. So how do we get from a blank page to this? Well, it all starts with Beaver Builder. To use Beaver Builder and Microthema at the same time from one screen, we can access the Microthema interface and then enable Beaver Builder via the view menu. And if we want to make a bit more space for Beaver Builder, we can temporarily hide the Microthema interface. Beaver Builder makes it really easy to add rows of up to six columns. We just drag the row onto our page. Adding content is just as easy. We can, for instance, drag a heading module into one of the columns. Enter some text for the heading, and then click the Save button. We can add some text below the heading by dragging across the text editor module. This module has all the functionality of the WordPress post and page editor. We can format text and add media. Beaver Builder also has a module for adding buttons. We can customize the text. And add a link. It's important to note that Beaver Builder has CSS styling options too, though not as many as Microthema. As this isn't Beaver Builder's specialist area. Adding content like contact forms, maps, and slideshows is equally simple with Beaver Builder. Adding a map is as simple as dragging it onto the page and then entering an address. Furthermore, we don't actually need to start from a blank page with Beaver Builder. We could load a nice template to kickstart our design. But before we get carried away with Beaver Builder's great features, let's stay focused on our real world landing page. Beaver Builder allows us to save our customized rows and modules for later use. I've done this already to save you having to watch me type out lots of text. So I'll add these pre-made rows to the page now. Starting with the intro, followed by the overviews, and then the what you can do heading, the features, and finally the pricing. All of this content was built using the heading, text, and button modules we touched on just before. With the exception of the video at the top, the theme of a website already has a system for displaying videos in a light box. It was possible to integrate this into the current page by copying the HTML for triggering the light box into Beaver Builder's HTML module. This feature makes it really easy to integrate Beaver Builder with existing sites. Now that we have our content in place, we can start making style changes with Microthema. We don't even need to exit Beaver Builder to start styling things with Microthema. The Beaver Builder overlays will conveniently make way for the Microthema overlays during targeting. But as we're only going to use Microthema for the rest of this video, let's exit Beaver Builder the same way we enabled it. Designing with Microthema is a two-step process. First, we target something on the page by creating a selector. Then we apply new styles. To enter targeting mode, we simply click the target button. Microthema will highlight the elements we hover over. To select something, we just click it. To deselect, we just click anywhere on the page again. Let's click the header element to select it. It's a good habit to work with the advanced targeting options expanded. 
The advanced options reveal the ugly underside of the web page, the raw HTML and CSS code, as well as suggesting ways to target elements over on the right. All of this can be scary if unfamiliar, but mastering these tools will allow us to be highly effective with Microthema, no matter what theme or plugin content we want to style. Rather than try to explain everything in the abstract, we'll visit the options one at a time as and when they become relevant to styling the various elements on the page. Let's start with the option to limit selectors to one page. To do this, we click the CSS modifiers icon and then enable the page ID option. Now, all of the selectors Microthema generates will be specific to whatever page we're working on. By the way, this is also where we would enable hover selectors or any other pseudo selector. Microthema auto generates the descriptive label when we target elements. Sometimes this will save us writing our own, other times it's worth changing to something more meaningful. In this case, the default label will do. Just to be organized, let's create a custom folder for our selectors. And then click the create selector button to finish. We can now apply some new styles. Let's increase the height of the header to 430 pixels to give our video a nice backdrop. And then set the background color. Microthema includes some useful color palettes. We can sample colors affecting the current page here and save our favorite colors via the save button. So let's apply a previously saved red color and then add Themeover's butterfly branding as a background image. We can adjust the size and position of our background image too. Because we want our title and video to overlap with the header, we will target the element that contains all the central content and shift it up. As we're customizing a Beaver Builder page in this example, we're after the top level Beaver Builder container element. So we start by clicking the target button and then hover around the page until the highlighting looks right. The trouble is we get a single row instead of the container element that holds everything. It's not possible to single out the element we want due to the lack of space separating the container element from the elements inside it. This is a common problem, but the advanced targeting options provide an insight and a solution. Look at the breadcrumbs below the HTML code. Notice that the highlighted option has the word row in it. So does the option to the left, but the option to the left of that says FL Builder content. So we can click the breadcrumb to switch targeting to that element. Now, if we look at the highlighting, we can see that it does cover all of the Beaver Builder content. Microthema's auto-generated label isn't ideal in this case, so let's change it. And then click the Create Selector button. To move everything up, we can use a CSS trick where we give the top margin a negative value, minus 420 pixels. Now for the page heading, a relatively simpler task. We just click on the page heading, adjust the label, and then create the selector. Let's improve the contrast by darkening the text color, and then center align it. We can then create a selector for the tagline. Change the text color to white. Increase the font size a bit. And also center align it. Now to make the video look pretty. To improve the contrast of the page, we can create a selector for the main wrapper element. And then set the background of the whole page to white. Then we create a selector for the video itself. But we have a problem. Clicking on the video triggers the JavaScript lightbox functionality. So the way to overcome this is to click near the element and then switch targeting. 
either using the breadcrumbs as we did before, or in this instance, by clicking on the line of HTML that we recognize from adding our custom HTML via Beaver Builder earlier. We could also have used a third option, the HTML navigation arrows. We can then customize the label and create the selector. Let's add some box shadow to help our video stand out. We'll give it an even blur and a semi-transparent gray color so it blends well with the white and red backgrounds. We will set the max width to half of the actual size of the image. That's so the image appears crisp on high resolution displays. To center it, we will set margin left and right to auto. So our page is beginning to take shape, but so far we've just demonstrated how to apply a handful of styles to individual elements. We yet to tap into Microthema's ability to style multiple elements in one go. So let's do that with the overview subheadings. If we enable targeting mode and then click on one heading, the default targeting is just for that one heading. But Microthema suggests alternative selectors that will target the element we clicked as well as related elements on the page. The numbers on the right are useful for showing us how many elements each suggestion targets. So we can choose the option for targeting two elements. Notice how the blue highlighting changes to reveal the scope of the selector. It looks good, so we can go ahead and create the selector. Now we can add some icons to the headings. We can adjust the padding to make room for the icons. Add a background image. Tweak the position. Set repeat to no repeat. And finally, set the size of the icon. We can then create a separate selector for the Microthema heading. And add the Microthema logo. Now let's target another set of elements, the four buttons. We start by selecting one button and then choose the alternative suggestion that targets all four buttons. We can give it a better label and then create the selector. Let's change the background to green. Increase the padding Remove the border and increase the border radius. Let's also change the font color to white. Except that won't work. Why? Let's use the targeting options to find out. If we look closely, the highlighting reveals that the button is actually made of two elements, a link element with a span element nested inside. Watch how the breadcrumbs change as we move our mouse left and right. We previously targeted the outer link element, so let's target the inner span element this time. Now is a good time to introduce the styles pane. This tells us which CSS styles already apply to an element. We can see that Beaver Builder sets an explicit color on the span element, which is overriding the white color we set on the parent link element. The styles pane is great for diagnosing issues like this, but can slow down the browser when active. So we recommend using it only when needed. The computed styles pane provides similar information with some key differences. Sizes are always shown in pixel units, and there is no information about which selector applied the style. Back to the issue at hand. 
we can create a selector that targets the button text for all four buttons. And then successfully override the text color. We can style the rest of the page for desktop by simply repeating the tricks we've learned so far. So let's fast forward to that point by re-enabling some selectors I prepared earlier. Starting with the What Can You Do heading, moving down to the Feature subheadings, and then the Columns, Buttons and Lists in the Pricing section. This ability to temporarily disable folders and selectors in Microthema can be very useful for troubleshooting, by the way. So with our core design in place, we can now focus on mobile. Thankfully, Beaver Builder does most of the work for us in this area. So we only need Microthema for little touch-ups. To ensure Microthema's responsive styles work in harmony with Beaver Builders, we can take advantage of another integration feature. To do this, we launch the Edit Media Queries pop-up and then click the option to load an alternative media query set. We select Beaver Builder MQs from the drop-down menu and set Overwrite Existing Media Queries to No. While we're here, we could optionally customize Microthema's default media queries or add our own. We then click the Update Media Queries button to save. Now we have two extra responsive tabs. These match the customizable breakpoints that can be set via Beaver Builder's global settings. If we click on the new BB Small tab, we can see how Beaver Builder adjusts to a single column layout at the 768 pixel mark. Judging by the amount of space on either side of the column, it appears a max width has been set a bit lower than necessary at this screen width. And if we want to make sure that the site looks great on large phones and small tablets, like the regular mini iPad, it's worth making a little adjustment here. With the BB Small tab now in place, this is really simple. To start, we enable targeting mode and then click on some content in the column. To help us find the exact element, we'll enable the styles pane. And then click the up arrow repeatedly until we see a max width rule. Finding it tells us we've targeted the correct element. So the next step is to choose the appropriate targeting suggestion. The option that target six elements uses the same class shown in the styles pane. And if we scroll down the page, the highlighting confirms that this is the correct selector. Finally, we can adjust the default label and click the create selector button. Now we can override the max width rule of 400 pixels. We ensure that we're on the BB small tab, go to the dimensions property group, and set max width to 100% so it fully fills the space. Our content now looks smart on a wider range of screen sizes, from small screens to medium sized screens and beyond. Using this method of applying screen specific styles via Microthema's responsive tabs, we can apply little finishing touches to make our site look perfect at every single screen size. So I hope this tutorial has provided a reasonable insight into what's possible with Beaver Builder and Microthema. If you think these products might be able to speed up your workflow or solve CSS headaches, please try them out for yourself. Both products are extremely well supported and assured with a money back guarantee.